Hi there, this is Harry and welcome back to Advanced English Lessons with Harry where I try to help you to get a better understanding of the English language. You might be trying to do some job interviews, you might be trying to do some of those proficiency exams that you hope to pass and you need some help with your English so we're here to help you. And today before we go into our lesson I just want to talk to you about Preply. As you know, I'm a very strong advocate of one-to-one -one lessons as a great way to learn English or any particular language and Preply is one of those particular platforms. Preply has over 32,000 tutors, native tutors in Spanish, English, German, Portuguese, Chinese, in fact over 50 different languages. Often self-guided learning can be challenging to stick with and most language learning apps are one size fits all. However, with your Preply teacher, you can develop an individual learning plan to suit your goals and needs. From immersing yourself in a new culture to succeeding in your career, Preply teaches you to speak a new language naturally. With Preply, you learn a new language from real expert tutors based all around the world. Booking a lesson with Preply is easy. Just use the filters to narrow down your search and book your lesson in seconds using the desktop or mobile app. And the good news is that with Preply's 100% satisfaction guarantee, they will give you a replacement tutor if for any reason your first tutor doesn't match up to your expectations. Over 10 million lessons have been booked with Preply, so don't you think it's about time that you tried Preply? And remember to click on the link in the description below to make sure that you get your 50% reduction in the first lesson that you book with Preply. Thanks Preply for sponsoring this lesson. Okay, so let's get back to our lesson. As I said, it's an advanced English lesson. We're looking at phrasal verbs. We've got 18 in total, and these phrasal verbs are split into different groups and they're all about better communication. Speaking phrasal verbs to improve or to give you or help you with better communication. Okay, so let's go through them. First, we're looking at negative speaking. Okay, so first one is go on. Okay, so when somebody goes on, it means they go on and on and on. So this is why we talk about negative speaking because it's something you don't want to hear. You don't want to hear people going on. Okay, so they're going to talk about a topic that you're bored about, but they just go on and on. For example, he went on and on about his new car. He went on and on about his new job. So kept talking about it. So you got really, really bored, not very interested, and uh, you would wish that he could please be quiet. So it's when somebody goes on. Okay, and the next one is when somebody harps on. So to harp on about something is very similar to harp on, is about talking repeatedly about something. Okay, repeatedly. Somebody was harping on about the lack of money that they have. It kept saying, oh, I have no money, pay too much tax, I never have any money, I can't do this, I can't do that. They just harp on, they go on, like playing a harp, yeah, the musical instrument. They harp on about this ad nauseum. They just will not stop. So again, very negative. And then the third one is to ramble on. Now this is slightly different. When somebody rambles on, they talk for a long time, but nothing seems to be connected and they, they miss the point or they go off the point and they ramble on from one topic to another. Okay, so, oh, he rambled on at that presentation. Really, I thought we were going to be there for 15 minutes. We ended up being there for 30 or 40 minutes and he rambled on about such nonsense. But you know what these old people are like, they can ramble on, you have to keep them focused, okay? So to ramble on is about talking for a long time, but not very interesting to the other people. And you're talking about lots of points that are usually disconnected or not connected to each other, to ramble on. So when we're talking negative issues about speaking, we can say somebody goes on and on, somebody harps on, continuously talking about some issue that you just fed up with and to ramble on, to go on without getting to the point. Now, if I could ask you, if you do like this particular lesson, then please like the video. And if you can, subscribe to the channel because it really, really helps. 
Okay, now, when somebody speaks quickly, let's look at a couple of examples of those. Somebody can rattle something off, okay? So they speak quickly. They can rattle off the name of the the last 20 winners of the World Cup. They can just, you know, some guy is an expert on, as we call them, eggheads. They're the expert on football topics. So they can rattle off the list of the last 20 winners of the World Cup. And this is, can be very impressive. Yeah, you could be impressed with the amount of knowledge that they have. It might not be so important, a little bit of trivia there, but, you know, World Cup winners. But it's very impressive that somebody can rattle them off without even having to take breath. They just go one, 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 and whoever won it, Brazil, Brazil, or whoever, yeah, and they rattle the list off. And remember, click on the link in the description below to make sure that you get your 50% reduction in the first lesson purchased with Preply. Somebody can also reel something off. Now to reel something off again means to go through a list with uh, not taking breath without having really to think about it, okay? So he can reel something off <laughs> all of his friends or all of his school friends and what they are now doing. So it's like rattling something off to reel something off. The meaning is almost identical. Okay, so if he reeled off all the guys that he met in his class or in his university and exactly what they have or where they're working now, so he knew the intimate details of all of them. You'd be very impressed with something like that. Okay, so when somebody is speaking quickly, they can rattle something off, they can reel something off. The meaning is go through a list of yeah, related information, might be interesting, might not be interesting, might be trivia, might be important, but they can rattle or reel them off, like the name of all of the planets. Yeah, as I said, the, the names of all the previous World Cup winners, the last 20 presidents of France, you know, somebody has all of that sort of information, quite impressive. And we would normally refer to them as eggheads. The next would be about interrupting. So these are phrasal verbs connected with interrupting. So one of the most popular is to butt in. Now to have a look at how that is spelled. You'll see it here on the screen, B-U-T-T. -T. Okay, so when somebody butts in, they interrupt without being asked or without asking permission. So they, they enter into the conversation quite rudely. Now they might ask, do you mind if I butt in there? And somebody says, no, go away. Or they just butt in and they give their comment or give their opinion and everybody has to listen to it. So they butt in. We were having a conversation around the coffee table and this guy who knows everything about everything decided to butt in on the conversation. Well, my opinion is, well, nobody wants to listen to your opinion. So, you know, don't butt in. So don't interrupt. The same interrupt, you can chip in. Now, chip in is uh, slightly different. You can chip in with some ideas. So if you're sitting around the table and you're having a meeting, the boss might say, well, look, if somebody wants to chip in and give some ideas, yeah, please feel free to do so. So you're invited as part of the, the group around the table to chip in with any ideas that you think are worthwhile. So if you're having one of those brainstorming sessions, then the boss or whoever's chairing the meeting will expect you to chip in with some ideas. After all, that's why you've been invited and that is why you are there. So when you butt in, you do it uninvited and quite rudely. When you chip in, you add some additional information that people might find useful. Now, we can also chip in when somebody's making a collection and we all add some money into the collection so we get a better present, so we chip in. But here we're talking about conversations and when somebody chips in, it's to add something important or relevant or something that might be useful, okay? So it's a specific point in the conversation. Next is when we talk, uh, people are speaking very suddenly, okay? So that something maybe a little bit unexpected or something that we, we wanted to um, talk about, but it's, it's, it just comes in quickly. So somebody speaking suddenly. So I've got two examples of that. The first is to blurt out. Okay, so be careful with the pronunciation and the, and the spelling of this to blurt out. So when somebody blurts out something, they something say something very quickly. Okay, and they also say something very suddenly and usually without thinking. Okay, so if you're at a pub quiz and uh, the 
person who's reading out the, the questions is halfway through the first question and one of your colleagues blurts out the answer. Oops, oh, really sorry, I'm not supposed to do that. So they blurt out the answer. They speak very suddenly and everybody laughs, of course, because he's given away the, the answer to the question. He wasn't supposed to do that. So you shouldn't blurt out the answer in the pub quiz, not, not something that you, you should really, really do. So blurt out, speak very suddenly and, and quickly without thinking. But you can also come out with a remark. Now, it could be a funny remark. It could be a casual remark. It could be an insult to come out with something quite funny. Or you can always rely on Harry to come out with something quite funny. So if somebody says something, you'll have a quick remark to reply or some little joke or some little ironic witticism, yeah? Okay, so to come out with something. So when you come out with a remark, again, you say it suddenly. You blurt out, you do it without thinking. You come out, you, you maybe you're just a little bit quicker at thinking than other people or a little bit wittier than other people. So you come out with a particular remark. Oh, you should have seen the looks on people's faces last night when Michael came out with his joke. It was really quite funny, but a little bit rude, uh, but really, really quite funny. So you're never quite sure what he'll come out with next. Okay, so you're not sure what he'll say, but you can be guaranteed that will probably be witty and very, very funny. Okay, so they're about speaking suddenly to blurt out or come out with something. Okay, so when we're speaking, we can also contribute to the conversation. So when you're contributing, the type of phrasal verbs we would use would be like, come up with something. Okay, come up with something. All right, so when you come up with something, you're adding a new idea some new suggestion that hasn't been thought of before. So can anybody come up with a good suggestion as to what we'll do for this year's Christmas party? We seem to have tried everything in the last few years. And of course we had COVID that stopped us having our party. So now we would like to have something really special. So can anybody come up with an idea? If you can, could you email me by next week? So to come up with good ideas. At the same time, when we're con contributing, we can go along with other ideas, okay? So when you go along with ideas, you agree with them, okay? So come up with an idea, you introduce a new idea, and when you go along with an idea, you agree with some idea that somebody else has introduced. Okay, so you're sitting around the table, the boss has asked for some suggestions relating to the Christmas party, as we mentioned, so somebody comes up with a good idea. I know, why don't we have a themed party relating to horror? Or why don't we have a themed party relating to 80s music? Okay, so somebody says, oh yeah, that's a really, really good idea. I like that, that's we could play 80s music and so everybody could dress as their favorite character from the 80s. So you go along with the idea. In this way, you are contributing by underlining or endorsing the suggestion that somebody else has made. So you could come up with an idea and then go along with an idea. Okay, now next is if we look at something about not speaking, okay? So let's let's look at that and we've got some phrasal verbs that uh, I have here. Let me just get them up on the, the screen. Okay, so first is to shut up. Okay, so if you don't want somebody to speak or you're, you've said enough or they, they're talking a lot of rubbish, you might just simply ask them, look, would you please shut up? Or you might even be so polite with the please and just say, shut up. And you, you put some intonation in your voice that will get the message across that you really want them to zip it. Okay, so to shut up. Now, it can be a little bit rude depending on how you say it, but, but when you tell somebody to shut up, I don't think there's a really a polite way to say it. Please shut up might be the politest it is, but you know, generally people get a little bit insulted, so you have to be very, very careful. But it can be taken as very, very rude. But it is a phrasal verb to encourage or persuade or to ask somebody not to speak. So shut up, please shut up, shut up, please, or just simply shut up. Or why don't you shut up? Shut up! Somebody can break off. Now, when you're in a conversation, somebody breaks off, it means they suddenly stop. They stop speaking. 
So perhaps somebody was in mid-sentence and then they broke off perhaps to allow somebody else make a comment or they broke off because they lost their train of thought. They would mention something and then they're staring into space. They say, oh, I've forgotten what I was going to say now. So they break off and they stop quite suddenly and people are sort of waiting there, waiting for the next comment to be made. So to break off. Some people can clam up. You know what a clam is? It's a shellfish, okay? And it's very hard to open them, okay? So when somebody clams up, they shut completely, to shut their mouth, and they don't say anything, okay? So to refuse to, to speak or to become very silent during a conversation, some kids who can be very, very shy at an early age, they clam up when they're in the presence of maybe their school teacher or in the presence of their grandparents or somebody they see as a authoritarian figure, they just clam up. Or if you're trying to find out from the, the kids who broke the window, they just clam up, nobody's gonna tell you anything and you just won't get any information from them, they clam up. And then finally, in that section, dry up. Well, when somebody dries up, they stop speaking because they either run out of words to say or they forget what they want to say or because they are nervous, they can't remember the line. So an actor or actress on the stage can dry up very suddenly because they, they just their mind has gone blank and they can't remember the lines. And so somebody from the, the wings of the theatre might be trying to prompt them as to what to say next because it's a disaster when they dry up. Or somebody who's a little bit nervous uh, when they're making a presentation to their peers can dry up because they, they get a bit nervous and they can't remember what's next. And that's why it's a good idea to have, like me, a laptop in front of you that you can glance at and you can look at the screen, have something there that you can read or glance at, okay, to, to dry up. So if we go to um, the next one is when people are speaking rudely. We already used one here about um, to shut up and that would be very rude to tell somebody to, to shut up. So, so some other phrasal verbs connected with speaking rudely, to talk at somebody. Yeah, it's nice to have a conversation with people. So we're talking as equals to talk with somebody, to talk with your family, to talk with your friends. But if you talk at somebody, you're sort of taking in a dominant position and you're talking at them a, a, a bit like a lecture. You should do this, you should do that. If I was you, I would do this. If I was you, I would do that. That's when somebody's talking at you, okay? So yeah, you're perhaps not listening, you've closed your ears, but this person will continue to talk at you in a dominant way, okay? I don't like it when people talk at me. I like it when people talk with me, but I don't like it when people talk at me. And to talk down to somebody, well, this is really bad as well. Talk down to people is when you treat someone as inferior or subordinate to you. You talk down to them. Oh, is that where you live? Oh, is that what you do? Well, I would do this. So you talk down to them, again, extremely rude. And then finally, to go off, okay? Okay, so when you go off, oh, he got into a real mood. He just went off and, the, and started shouting and screaming. So to go off means to be rather angry or to speak angrily about something, about someone, about anything. Yes. Oh, you know what he's like when he gets something in his mind. He just goes off on one of these rants. So he's, he went off on a rant today about overheads and costs. And, you know, we have to be careful of this and have to be careful of that. He just went off on one of these rants that he likes to do. Okay, so that's when we're talking about speaking slightly rudely, okay? So to talk at someone without letting them contribute, to talk down to someone, to make them feel a little bit inferior, and then to go off on one or to, to uh, go off means to rant about something that you feel is important, but other people might not feel it's so important, but it's said in an angry way. Okay, so these are all phrasal verbs connected with speaking. And if you look at them, I mean, they're phrasal verbs. So of course, you're going to have a verb and you're going to have a preposition. Lots of them have other meanings. But here we're talking about phrasal verbs, particularly with speaking. So about negative speaking, contributing. So let me give you the titles again so that you'll have an idea 
what we're looking at. Okay, so the first one that we spoke about was negative speaking. Okay, so we had to go on and to harp on and to ramble on. Then we looked at speaking quickly when somebody rattles something off or reels something off. Then about interrupting to butt in or to chip in. Then somebody speaking suddenly to blurt out or to come out with something. Then more constructive, contributing to come up with, to go along with. Then about trying to get people not to speak, to tell somebody to shut up, to break off what you're saying, to clam up or to dry up. And then finally, when you were speaking rudely, talk at someone, talk down to someone, and then to go off. Okay, so all phrasal verbs, try and uh, practice those. I say they're advanced phrasal verbs in the way that we're trying to use them here. See, can you introduce them into your conversations, into your writing? If you need any help, you know where I am. I'm very happy to help you further. Just takes a little bit of practice. So whatever you do, practice, practice, and a bit more practice. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Join me again for the next lesson.